expense report, Doug? Yep. Yep. So um, I sent out what ended up being two different treasurer's reports. The second one, which I labeled the revised, um, is the corrected one. And the only difference is the sinking fund that we had spoke about and Ray was questioning. So I met with um, Alice and Tracy. Uh, we discussed the fiscal year end uh, 630 um, and the amount that was unspent. We verified going forward from the prior year um, we found one error in the calculation during the year. There was a formula that carried from one month to the next that shouldn't have. And we added the balance that was left over that was unspent. So the building maintenance sinking fund is 59,932.66. Um, and you can see that as of August 31st, the balance in the accounts was getting low. It was at 139.708. Um, we did have available funds in the loan balance, which we haven't used, but in the meantime, we have also gotten the first uh, state aid, which came in on Monday. So um, okay. we are in good shape from a cash position. All right. Great. That's good. And uh, you uh, want to, um, last night you were telling me something about tax rates, perhaps you need to talk about that too, because you know what the COA did to our tax rate. Sure, absolutely. Yep. Let me just grab my notes from last night and I can give you that. But in the meantime, while I'm pulling that up, um, tax billing, I talked about this last night, uh, tax billing is ongoing currently. Um, everything was printed as of yesterday. I'm in the midst of stuffing envelopes now. So all tax bills for Village of North Bennington and the Shaftbury ID District will all be in the mail as of Friday, um, probably Thursday, but we're saying Friday just in case we get delayed on anything. And the final rate for tax or for education, the homestead for 24 is one dollar ninety nine six so one point nine nine six that is up from one dollar fifty six twenty eight yeah, is that north bennington or? that's north bennington yep okay non homes non homestead so either second home rental property whatever the case may be that is just over two dollars so two dollars two point zero zero two three and in 23, that was a dollar seventy-one forty-six. Daxbury ID homestead is one dollar thirty eighty-three. Non-homestead one dollar sixty-two eighty. And I didn't jot down what the uh, prior, but that was also up, not as significant as North Bennington, but it was up. I think that is required. Isn't it? What's that? That sounds low. Uh -huh. Well, so Shaftesbury, their CLA was actually right around 85. I think they were 85.1. Yeah. That's true. Yep. Whereas North so, Bennington was down around 69%. Right. So the I'm looking at the annual report which came before the CLA bust occurred. So I had uh, the 129.90 for Shaftesbury ID as the blended tax rate um, with CLA, the, well, actually with 85% CLA in there. Okay. Well, actually, I'm looking at this annual report, and um, it shows our anticipated e uh, equalization CLA rate as 69.47 for North Bennington and 85.44 for Shaftesbury. 
and then it gives an estimate of the homestead tax rate that is 159.76 for North Bennington and 129.90 for Shaftesbury ID. Uh, yeah, I I don't know. I pulled. Um, I can go right back out again, but when um, when I was working with Nemric on uh, Monday, we went right to the state site. So I'm actually yeah. I have it bookmarked. So. Let's see, and this is fiscal year 24 as of August 25th, which was when the state set the final rates. Yeah. And let's see, going down to North Bennington. And this is all on the Vermont State site. So if anybody's listening or wants to go out, you can see all the towns. Yeah. So they have North Bennington at a CLA of 69.47. And they have, let's see here. Okay, so where, yep. So Ray, you are correct. There is a difference. So where did that number come from? Right, okay, understand. let me, well, I'm gonna need to look into the North Bennington homestead rate, the, um, Non-homestead rate matches, but the homestead rate is different. So I am going to have to look into that. That is the 16090 that you're stating. So I don't know where that secondary number is coming from. So I will follow up on that. You're on fire. Find that out. What's that? Sorry, nothing. My cat just caught on fire. Uh-oh. You're what? <laughs> okay, so I, I, I'm just looking at the report, which was for the FY24 data, and it showed elementary prorate of 71 cents, uh, MAU prorate of 39, 40, 40 cents, basically. For an anticipated equalized homestead tax rate of 110.99. And then it gives the 60, you know, 69.47 as the CLA, which was, was actually known then. And then the estimated homestead tax rate showing is 159.76, a three cent in three and a half cent increase over the previous year. So I don't right. really understand. Yeah, I'm gonna like I said, I'm gonna have to talk to I'm gonna have to talk to Nemric. Yeah. Um the Less tax money. billing company. Yeah. Plus the figures in this report are were inaccurate calculated. I didn't calculate these figures. That's that's from the blending of chat of MAU with North Bennington that uh, would be done by the finance office. So yes, I think right. that would be a good thing to check. Yes, yep, and that's that's one of the things, like I said, the bills have not gone out yet. So right. if we do have to make a correction, we can make that correction. Um, so I'm making right. notes for myself right now. I'm gonna email them um, as soon as we hang up. I just double checked on that report and the Shaftesbury number looks correct. That matches what's on this report. Um, so I'm going to need to, uh, talk just about the North Bennington portion. Yep. Okay. And, uh, we will welcome any correction <laughs> that might be available to us. Yep. No, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, so we'll look forward to hearing from you about that. Thank you. Thank you. Doug. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, Thank you. Next, next item on the, our business is con consent agenda. And the consent agenda is approval of the minutes of August 23rd and uh, warrant for uh, this month. Now, the consent agenda, the minutes, I've gone over these. Okay. I have some small corrections, uh, but it's nothing that changes sense except at one point um i mean mostly they were 
typos or and um but then I thought uh, there needed to be a little more explanation about what it meant to have the building operating at neutral. So I wrote a phrase for that. Otherwise, um, it's just minor corrections. So, um, and then the, if we're looking at the warrant for the year or the month, we have a payroll warrant of 29.60 and 38 cents for Doug, or that's the quarterly payment to Doug, Doug right? And um, for his services as our treasurer, we are greatly appreciating. Indeed. And then the, the warrant, the second warrant, part of the warrant is the so-called vendor warrant, which is uh, minutes for the board meeting to Lauren, Lori LOL for 90, 50 bucks. Um, for last month's minutes. Uh, then there are billings for um, the independent schools that our children attend. Uh, none from the SVU, ESD, or Arlington, and we can expect that come next month, I think. Uh, so the, there's um, listed three students for Highland Hall, two for Long Trail, four for Sacred Heart, um, 16 for South Stryer, and we're paying 109 for the Village School. Now, and there's a, also there's a prebate paid back to the, the Village of North Bennington for uh, sending out prebate checks to uh, taxpayers under the state's uh, program for uh, taking into account income the fact says now I would I would uh, say Doug had asked me a question about how many students and I know that there's some students not on here right now because there was a flurry of late sort of latish early latish uh, children coming in uh, so there are extra students for, there's one extra student for Sacred Heart. Uh, there's, I believe there are 17, one extra student for uh, Southshire, 17 rather than 16. Um, and uh, also there are, I believe there are two Maple Street schools students. So that, as I, if, and of course, then there are the, um, so that adds up to about 29 independent school students in addition to the independent school students at the village school. And then for uh, public school tuitions, there's one to Arlington, Fisher Elementary. There are 20 at South Shaftesbury and two at Molly Stark. So the total of those other students other than ESNB are, is 52, I think. That's my estimate based on looking back through what happened this past week. And uh, with, you know, adding in Pre-K students, there are 28 pre-K students that I know of, I'm aware of, and um, adding in uh, VSNV, I estimate I come up with 180 students uh, total as ADM, which has been our ADM for the, the average for the past two years, so consistent with that. Does that help you, Doug? He's gone. Oh, he's gone. Yes. I'm talking to, talking to, I didn't, I didn't want to say anything. Uh, anyway, he'd asked me some questions, so I sent him the data, and I, the, the data is exactly what I repeated. Um, so, um, well, uh, I'll move that we approve the consent agenda. I'll second that. All right. 
Um, and Kiernan is still here? I don't... Yes. Yeah, okay. I'm here. Thanks. So, uh, any questions or uh, discussion of consent agenda? Nope. All right. I'll call the question. What? Sorry? So, not for me. Okay. Uh, I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 And that's all of us here. So that passes. Policies, there are none. Superintendent's report. I just have a, a quick update uh, related to um, SDSU policies. Um, a request of the uh, policy committee uh, last year was um, just uh, uh, to look for continued avenues to share um, policy updates and administrative updates with our administrative team. So we had a uh, administrative work party that worked this past summer uh, to make some suggested updates to policies and administrative um, um, regulations linked to current best practice. Uh, we were lucky to also have two of our school nurses that also made suggested updates to some of the health related administrative regulations because we know that um, uh, health guidance is constantly uh, changing. And then at our administrative retreat this summer, we were able to have um, all of the administrators uh, in attendance uh, read through some pertinent policies to start the year, um, which ended with a fun uh, game to review what we've learned. And our first policy meeting um, of the year, SBSU policy meeting was this past Monday, where we had members of that summer work group attend uh, to share with the policy committee the work that had been done. Um, and provided some of the updates. And so uh, there will be policies coming around and uh, the next meeting will be early in October. I also wanted to share this from uh, Superintendent Colkeen that one of the, the goals this summer um, was to create an SPSU staff guide um, as the district continues to grow. So I'm going to hand uh, uh, Ramono copies of these uh, staff guides to hand out to board members. So they have them as well, and that's my update for today. Thank you. All right, thanks for that. Um, here's report facility and operations. In the minutes, there was a, re a, a report on Derek's, um, Derek Siegler's presentation from um, Rush Meadow Consulting uh, last month about the ventilation report that uh, he's been designing for the building for an upgrade to the building and <clears throat> um lost my train of thought okay so uh oh yes <clears throat> and it is mentioned in there that i am supposed to be um uh working on the rfp <laughs> to put out to bid uh, so I, I have, uh, I that came as a shock to me when Derek said that I was supposed to be doing that because I didn't think I was supposed to do that. But uh, at any rate, um, I've contacted Holly Anderson, who was with us last month, and uh, though she does not have time to do this because she's cut, she's up to her neck in in uh, projects in the S, the rest of the SU. She was talking about being on a roof and so forth today <laughs> in the past few days. Mm -hmm. So, um, but she will give me some time. We can sit down and talk. Maybe uh, Holly, myself, and Terrence Marr from the village school, and we sit down and talk about or look over what she has for what she's been using for kind of documentation to put out there on bid. And so next month, hopefully, there will be a report on that from me. Because we were trying to get like a head start on this thing, like over the summer, and it's now to the point where we're into fall. And I know that uh, the difficulties of getting contractors are substantial, even though this job is smaller than what the other schools in the SU were looking at um, and can be, you know, it's one smaller piece as opposed to a big whole set of different uh, schools to deal with, but uh, still going to be difficult to get bids, I think. 
maybe we'll have to end up doing the uh, what's the name of that particular stratagem that Holly was talking about? Uh, construction management. But um, contract. So that's where that stands. Other, um, I sent a list. I, I sent you some documents to review, and and uh, mostly I don't think I, the people that need to review it are here. <laughs> so um, I sent that because I think I need to keep everybody informed uh, with the current. These are older documents, actually, but just you should be aware of have a file of our our policies that are specific to our particular operations and um, our lease with the of the building to the village school and our um, our tuition agreement with the village school. Um, I won't run through it because I. I think uh, you guys can read it and you can ask me questions if you have any. And student enrollment, I went over just now. Uh, so I am going, I have one other path to do. I had a meeting with uh, Kim Paul yesterday and she had sent me a letter uh, she is going to have to resign herself from the board uh, because she is taking a job with the audiologist who is employed by the SU, so she would be employed by the SU, and she can't be on our committee and be employed by the SU. So I, I will read this to you or read it aloud or be in the record. Uh, it's addressed to me. Dear North Bennington Prudential Committee, I am writing to formally resign from my position as a member of the North Bennington Prudential Committee, effective September 12th, 2023. This decision is not one that I make lightly, but it's become necessary due to an unavoidable employment conflict. Over the years, it has been my privilege to serve our community and to contribute to the betterment of our school. I have appreciated the opportunity to work alongside dedicated individuals on the board and witness the positive impact we've had on our village school, North Bennington and community. However, my new employment responsibilities are within Southwest Vermont, Southwestern Vermont Supervisory Union, which regrettably conflicts with my role as a school board member. Unfortunately, stepping down is required as a condition of my new employment. I will do my utmost to ensure a smooth transition and insist, assist in any way I can <clears throat> during this period. Please let me know how I can be of assistance in selecting my replacement or handling any pending matters. I want to express my sincere gratitude to all, all the board members, school staff, parents, students who have made my tenure on the North Bennington Prudential Committee a rewarding experience. I will cherish the memories and friendships I've made during my time here. Thank you for understanding my situation, and I hope the North Bennington Prudential Committee continues its mission to provide quality education to our community. Sincerely, Kimberly Cole. So, I will send a response for the board to her, and I, I talked to her personally about it on Monday. So. Um, keep in touch. Not as board board member board. Yeah, so, that's regrettable. Uh, sorry, that's regrettable. But I understand it's a good opportunity for her, and and frankly, she was holding on for our benefit uh, right. with great with great effect for the last few years, but. Yep. And uh, she'll be helping children. And that's a good thing. Yep. yep. Uh, so it, the status of our board with her resignation as of yesterday, um, 
is that um, we just wait until the March annual meeting and uh, we try to find someone to stand for that position on the ballot uh, because our charter does not uh, allow us without convening an annual, uh, something similar to an annual meeting to replace a member. We have to wait until the next, it makes sense to just wait until the next uh, annual meeting to do it and not have the cost of it, in this case, engaging in an election that would require ballots. Any comments other than Matt's here and Lori? No, I talked with uh, Kim a little earlier today. She mentioned it to me and um, no, I just wish her, wish her the best. It's just, um, I know with the, uh, when you're dealing with the SV, the SU and stuff like that, then, you know, conflict of interest. So um, he had that, I think with, um, he had that, I think a couple of years ago. Yes. Um, so I just wish you the best. Okay. Go ahead. And with that, I'm going to say, uh, uh, I'll open the, and we can have an other, it's in on our, it's on our agenda. And so if anyone wants to make any other comments, I'd be open to hearing them. If not, hey, one we'll, question I had quickly is, you said the 180, the total number of. Uh, uh, yeah, that's the total. That's the ADM, and that includes children who are in pre-K, which yep. you know yep. only counts 0.46. But, right? but you were saying that. Uh, that's been steady. Uh, that was the two-year average that that this budget was constructed on, and it looks like we will be approximately there again. Okay. Yes. But it does seem we need to, to get some clarity on these this uh, uh, these two different um, analyses of of the uh, the tax rate. Yes, definitely. I mean that's um, significant. I I can't you know looking up the estimates that are here, they're stated as estimates, but they aren't thinking that they're going to be that far off. <laughs> they're right. usually only a penny or two, one way or the other, depending on how things are worked out upstate. Um, so I'm I'm surprised I was, uh, you know, I, I was working under the assumption that this was pretty much pretty close to what we were going to see in the tax rate so because uh, it, they did have much, the coa as much as we would appreciate uh you know uh, a rate reduction based on those two different numbers uh it's if if what we're getting from the state is true then, then the tax bills which have already been printed will have to be redone yeah they'll have to be redone or uh something pasted on them. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Uh, yeah, you know, I've been through these numbers back during the budget season. Um, when I, the report came out, and I, I didn't see any problem. With it, so I really don't. Uh, well, as Doug said, it might be a, a problem with his um, software people or Whatever. I... Yeah. So I I can uh, I did not go back through these figures um, before this meeting, so you know. Um, but I never noticed that there was a problem before. You know, I know I know that the people in the finance office parse these things pretty fine. So. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I don't. <clears throat> I will try to get these booklets to everybody. Perhaps uh, 
I can drop one off to at two, a couple off at the school for at village school for Lori and for Kiernan to pick up and drop one for um, Matt directly on his porch or something. And uh, I'll, have, I'll find a way to get one to Doug at the next trustees meeting, I suppose. That's the SBSU staff car. So uh, I'm just going to declare the meeting uh, a need. We're over. Right? Okay. Thanks very much. Yep. Thank you. Bye. Bye.